Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. This is our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. Check out the podcast below in the description. Do it now. All right, everybody. Uh, let's start with this, Middlecoff. Uh, Florio on Pro Football Talk wrote, there's growing buzz in league circles that Deshaun Watson could ask to be traded, and his new contract doesn't make it as difficult as you think. Uh, Nick Casario hired as the GM of the Houston Texans. And uh, if you read the story, you know there's not a lot of meat in terms of Deshaun hasn't said it, although there was a little rumbling about he's telling teammates that, which, you know, I don't know exactly the context of those conversations. But I think what this is really about is would Nick Casario consider this? Is it actually a way for the Texans to pivot? And what would it cost? So first things first, is this insane? I don't think it's insane when you look at the status of their franchise. Uh, they do not have a pick, guy. Uh, they do not have a second-round pick. They have no picks. They have no cap space. They are terrible, right? It, it'd be one thing if they had just missed the playoffs by a game, had won 10 games this year. They won four games, guy. Four. They, if they had their pick, they would be drafting third overall in the draft. He had a career year. I'm a Deshaun Watson fan. But we just take a step back, take the emotion out of it, and go, the new GM who's coming from, I've compared him, look at the guy, great jawline. He's Belichick on keto. Super, super, super tight guy. All business. He's like Belichick, the younger version, who looks like kind of like a movie star, but if he was Belichick. Like, it's just, this guy is a no-nonsense skinnier version of what Scott Pioli was in Kansas City. And he's going to come in and go, well, my quarterback just had a historic season. Now, it's it's not his fault they were losing. Their defense was really bad. But I, we just know the way these guys think. The other thing you always have to keep an eye on, whenever you get a new GM and a new coach in a place, regardless who's there, whether it's Rodgers. We just saw a year after Aaron Rodgers took a team to the NFC Championship, they drafted a quarterback in the first round. That They were winning. So I... I think everything is on the table. I, I, you have to talk like that when it comes to football, a losing organization that is in this weird spot with the picks. I I think that factors in, guy, the picks. Um, I, Yeah, the fact that – absolutely. The fact that Miami's sitting there with their pick, and it's a good pick. And, you know, maybe part of this is like, do, do they have – does would Casario have a quarterback targeted that he would use whatever he gets to go get the replacement? We watched, I, you know, I think the hesitation for me if I were the owner of the team, and you know how much I hate owners getting involved, would be like, I just traded away DeAndre Hopkins, and now I've got a franchise quarterback who's 25, doesn't turn 26 to September. You want me to trade him away too? How long is this reset going to take? Maybe it's why Casario got a six-year contract, right? Um, because it might take a while. Now, Deshaun is a guy who you know, there was a time when I thought Jimmy Garoppolo could be better than him. That was obviously wrong. And I, I think I realized watching Deshaun against the Bills in the playoffs last year um, that that had a real chance to be wrong. Now, at that time, Jimmy was looking good. Um, and now here we are talking about Jimmy being gone. And Deshaun now is a – I mean, to me, he's not tier one, tier one, like the truly elite guys. But I, I do think he has shown that he's gotten better over the last two or three years. So yeah, what, what Jimmy he would command have. a big price. Because Deshaun got hurt his rookie year, I think at practice. He's had three years now of 26 and 9, 26 and 12, and this year 33 and 7. Like, and, and clearly his college resume speaks for itself. And and I was with you. Like, I don't think it was crazy. One, The only reason one, to compare them now is because we once compared them. One thing I think you learned. It's not a company. And I, 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 and I saw this with Kyler Murray. We overreact to one years in the league us humans that talk about it, fans, it's human nature. You're just reacting to what you just saw. What makes excellent players and max players, true max players, just do it every year. Do it every, your, your bad year is 26 and 12, but you play 12 games. Or, I mean, you play the 16-game schedule. And last year when he went 26 and 12, remember, they won a playoff game. They beat, beat the Bulls, uh, not the Bulls, the Bills in the first round. Like this guy, hey, they, they were down sixteen to nothing in that game. Yeah, right? has a college resume, now an NFL resume. I I gotta stop attempting, but it's hard because it's like Kyler's killing it or Jimmy's having a good season. You don't go, this guy sucks, right? But it's just you gotta be careful with making the bold statements of this guy's a tier one guy or this guy's a tier two guy. I, I, I'm as guilty as anybody. 
That's why Deshaun, to me, teams would be lined up interested in him. And I do think if you just look at historically the way the Patriots have done business, and that's where this guy has been groomed from. And again, if they had picks, like if you had the third overall pick, you would just be like, we'll just go draft a sweet guy. We'll just maybe trade Watt and we'll use some of these picks to get back in the mix. I don't think it would be an option, but because of their situation, uh, I, I think it's just, I think it's something that you have to, it's not crazy if 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 the buzz starts to become a little more tangible. Right. And this is that's the other part of this, right? This isn't people think Casario wants to do this. That's not at least what the story is today. The story is Deshaun might want out. Yeah. And maybe Casario would be less resistant than you would think a GM would be uh to do it. Now, the other part of this is like, you know, famously Kyle didn't really evaluate this draft that he was in. The Deshaun Watson, Mitchell Trubisky Patrick Mahomes draft. Yeah. Kyle didn't really dive into the quarterbacks that year. He thought he was going to have Kirk Cousins. Has he seen a lot of Deshaun Watson since? Yes. You would think he's got a much different opinion of him now than he did coming out. But um, would it be hard for you to bite the bullet and pay this much for a guy that you just you could have had and didn't take? Well, what would be what, what would you guess the starting point of any sort of deal with a guy like this? Well, what was the Khalil Mack trade for a non-quarterback who needed to be paid? There have now been three of them, right? Khalil, Jamal, and Jalen Ramsey. They've all been – Khalil was cheaper than those two guys, remember, because the Raiders flip-flopped the second and the third. That's right. Those two guys, a year and two years after, were two ones and a two. Nothing going back. No pick swaps. The way business is supposed to be done. I'm giving you Jalen Ramsey. That's it. Like, he goes alone. You give me back. They've been two ones and a two. So I would say the – Minimum, like uh, it would be considered a cheap deal, would be two ones, two twos, and maybe even like sprinkle in a four. But I, it's like I, the fours, you know, and even the twos, if you go, well, if they get Deshaun, they might be good. I might need like three ones and a two, something like that. God, that's a lot. And, I and think where you I would str- need three ones. Where I struggle with the Niners is they have the same coach that pull, pulled the trigger on not doing anything with them. When you have a chance to draft a star quarterback at number two or three, you know, they could have got him at three when they traded back. That to me is the cheapest you're ever going to get the guy. If you just use it like round numbers, like they could have bought something for a million dollars and that thing would eventually have been worth $15 million. Now they have the opportunity to buy it and they, it's not, they got to pay like $20 million. I, I don't think it makes any sense, man. Part of having Kyle Shanahan is to be able to identify a Deshaun Watson. And I know the Deshaun Watsons don't come around very often, right? Just check his There's resume. no promise that Justin Fields or Zach Wilson no, could ever not, not be Deshaun at all. Watson. I mean, this guy is a pretty special player, but I, I don't like – I think it's a little bit of a desperate move, just given what you have to give up, right? It's you, You're not necessarily the loser, because if you look at it in baseball terms, I'm always a believer in trading Mookie Betts for prospects. You but, would, no, no, no. You're a believer in trading the prospects for Mookie Betts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Getting Mookie Betts for the prospects. The thing with football, though, is the first round picks are so valuable, not just because to pick a player, but as we saw with the Niners last year, you can trade back. They've done it several times, accumulate more. I mean, Belichick, uh, John Schneider have made a career of that move and accumulating more stuff. It's why the Texans are in a world of hurt right now. They don't have that asset, let alone it being the third overall pick. I'm out. I, I can't. Because, again, I, would I trade him for two ones and a two? Yeah, I'd fucking drive the picks to Houston right now if I'm Kyle Shanahan. I think he almost got to be like three ones and a two twos, like the starting point. Because Jamal Adams, if you had to do a pie chart of his importance to a team, and he's damn good, right, is Deshaun's 40% higher? Like, what? what's... Because you got to look at this. It's just an economic exercise. Like I, the two ones and the two, I remember with Jamal Adams, we were all blown away. But that is just, we talk about like in the law of precedent, like that's the precedent right now for that. I there hasn't add- been a star quarterback really in the prime of his career. I don't think in our lifetime really traded, right? Like a Peyton, a Brady, because you never get rid of those guys. Yeah. Right. You go through the downturn with them. They, yeah. they are the one asset you want to keep, and he's under contract. And he's under contract. Uh, I do want to add one other thing to this, which is every quarterback that becomes a discussion is connected to the Niners. Should it be Stafford? Should it be Deshaun? Should they trade up for Zach Wilson? 
Justin Fields, if he looks good on Monday night against Alabama, you got to go get him. If we are really getting comfortable with this conversation that Jimmy Garoppolo is gone, which is fine. We're going to keep having it because it's real. But we talk like we talk so much about it. Don't be like shocked like when Jimmy Garoppolo is the week one yeah. starter. That's yeah. all. Yeah, I mean, w- this is where I think coaches and, and front offices try to temper this shit because – it's going to be viewed very, very. People will be disappointed, right? If it's like, oh, Jimmy rolls back and they drafted some dude in the they, Kyle Trask in the third round, like that ain't doing it, you know. It, it'll be, but you don't. The narrative's already out of control, right? Because it, it is, and 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 that's not the Niners' and it's fault. It's not unfounded, really. it's, yeah. It's 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 on Jimmy. It's all right, <laughs> but J- Jimmy created this yes. by not playing. Because yeah. to me, and if Jimmy well. had played, people would have a tangible opinion. I think part of it is like he's nowhere to be found. Kind of feels a little weird. Like just get rid of him. It's just an easy thing to say because he's been out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. 